is Antignus. It says, Antignus is shloch al kibel ha me shimon ha tzadik. This is, Anti this is Soho, this is his town. While we're hiking here, it's a short time before Perm. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people in our community that are really, really struggling. And a lot of people out of work, a lot of people whose investments are gone if they had them. The people, some people that came from the States and investments or property have lost them. And just a lot of people. It goes beyond that. Many of us even in the yeshiva world who receive our, our stipends from, for, or used to receive our stipends from the, from the yeshiva for, for learning and teaching haven't received a escort in a year. I haven't received a paycheck from my yeshiva in, in, in a year and a half now. And, 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 you know, Baruch Hashem, these institutions were giving us food prior, but they're also, they're, they, they think the well, the, things are drying up, but we know that the Kodesh Baruch who runs the world, and we understand that he provides everything. Uh, I'm not starving, thank God, but uh, just as an example, there's many, many Torah scholars, young Torah scholar families out there who, who don't have uh, what to make Shabbos with, let alone Purim or Pesach that's coming up. So, you know, and it sounds funny to say this, it's not easy, and I don't mean not easy for people, but it's not easy for us. I don't mean personally. You know, I've been running chasing my Parnassa because that's what a man does. You can sit and learn. You can sit and chase. You've tried one, I'm trying the other. I don't really want to take my time to do this. But I can't sit here and watch my neighbors going to the shuk I see people and picking up the garbage left over from what the shuk guys can't sell. I, there's, there, you know, a neighbor lady was down at the, the Yesh the other day. Kiva, true story. I got into the, I was down, went down to the Mincha Minion. She says, can you just give me some five shekel for a loaf of bread? I have kids at home. American woman, husband's out of work, he's depressed. Situation, he was working for a company in the States that, 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 that collapsed. That she's never in her life had to ever ask anybody for anything, let alone enough money to bring home a loaf of bread. So we're sitting here doing this, not because we're out to make something. We don't have any overhead. We don't have any organization. No secretary to pay. No office. But because we can, we are obligated to do what we can. And that is to ask if you'll help us to help others. Akiva, we don't take anything from this. Last year, Buch Hashem, people sent us tips, you know, because we, we write and they appreciate what we do for Pesach, and it really helped because that made my Seder table. But uh, all the money you sent to us for other people, if it's not designated for Rav Akiva, Rav Nati, all of it, every single agara goes out to, to the needy. And hopefully in the weeks to come as we distribute what you send in, we'll do the reverse. We'll show you the fruits of your labors. So we're standing here, we're sitting here in the town of one of the one of the men of the Mishnah to ask you Chesed is still valid every day and the only way that people are going to get by is helping each other. Today, Baruch Hashem, we're able to sit here and ask and give to those that help. Tomorrow, God forbid, we may be in need and have to ask. And the day after that, God willing, our pockets will be full and we'll be able to give to those who need help. Today, we have to ask for your help to give to them. Because our pockets don't have to give them. What we have is a video camera and a blog, so we're using it to ask for help for our friends and neighbors and people of the community that are in need so that we can help them make a Purim. And yes, we're going to be back a week or two later asking again for Pesach. These are times when every Jew needs a little, little extra help, so do what you can. Don't be worried that you can't give a lot. Even if it's only a few dollars, every, every, every dollar, every shekel, every euro, 
Every ruble counts. If you just got a kopeck, send it. We'll 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 put it to the we'll put it to good use. We'll we'll pass it on to those who who are in need. So be like Hashem, who gives us so much every day, without expecting our thanks and just appreciating our thanks. Give with an open hand, and may Hakadosh Baruch Hu bless you with this Purim, that your table should be full, full of simcha, full of food, full of guests, full of happiness, full of family. And may each one of us, this Purim season, eradicate the Amalek from inside of our own hearts, so that we'll be able to go into the Pesach season, the season of our redemption, as free men, exter externally as well as internally. Amen. Thank you very much. So, amazingly, 2,600 years after that was written, we're standing in his hometown. The retaining walls are still here. The walls of the houses are still here. There's a tiled floor here, which had to either be a shul or a mikvah. There's wine presses, grinding stations. Clearly, a full... Jewish life town. One or two sections that are unfortunately relatively filled up nowadays, but clearly could have been a mikvah. Take a look right over here, Nutty. It's filled with, you know, it... <laughs> look. Or Mayim. Or Mayim. With water inside. Can you see the water? Yeah, there's water inside. It's wet inside. Not as wet as it should be, but it's wet inside. Look, right here. You see the channel they dug for it? Catch the rainwater, run it into the water storage. This was their reservoir for the year. Huge retaining wall down here. And when I say huge, rocks beyond man liftable capability. They and were, we're on the top of a hill. They were big men. No, they weren't. They were small men physically. They had they had helicopters. <laughs> Look at this wall. Come here. I'm looking at it. By the way, here's another storage chamber. Underground storage. Square entry. Food storage. Look at the wall. Now these surrounding hills are all scrub nowadays, but this hill is all flowers. It's flowers and barley. That's it. Flowers, barley, there's a couple of olive trees, there's a couple of fig trees. Look at this. A lot See, of wind. This was an olive press here. You know how I know? No, I don't. There's a, the a channel right there. There was a hole for oil. Here was a log. See the round hole? They put, they would put a uh, two posts. They have a stone in the middle, and they have posts, and they would uh, they would roll it. So uh, this this they, they they were pressing olive. They were pressing oil here. That's why there's a small uh, a, a flat chamber here that's with a little lip, and it would run off. It would run off. They produced olive oil here in this site, and this tree may be from one of the seeds that uh, from the discarded olives. Uh, possibly. Uh, similarly, actually, if you look at these fig trees they have around here, every one of them is growing out of one of the pits. Of course. Thank <laughs> you.